Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Tina, blog around the OAA, the host of the last few brain cells and the host of Between Two Minutes on Oriented with Tojin. I'd like to welcome those watching on a local voice on SoundCloud and those watching Oriented with Tojin. We got three coaches that we're going to talk to this week here. We're going to start with um, West Bloomfield football coach, Jack Hilbert's coach. Um, thank you for coming on this week. Yeah, of course. I'm glad to be here. It's always good to be here. Um, when you look at West Bloomfield last year, you guys went to the Division I state semifinals in the A&T. Um, how did, um, you know, obviously, you know, you look at, um, you know, for um, for you guys, how did it, you know, getting to back to the Division I state semifinals, how did it, um, you know, how's everything been going this year at West Bloomfield this offseason? Well, I mean, I guess in regards to this year, our biggest challenge is, you know, we were really close to our goal last year. Um, you know, I had a little bit of an up and down year, but by the end of the year, we were where we wanted to be, had a shot to win it. And, uh, you know, it didn't go our way. Um, and I guess our, our challenge now is to not be complacent and realize that we had a tough road to get just to get there. And if we want to get back and make one or two more plays and hopefully have a chance to win one or two more games, it's going to be really hard. Um, so, uh, you can't take it for granted, just past success. And all, and all it does is, you know, mean that there's a bigger target on your back, especially in this league. Talk about obviously the additions, obviously you made two big additions. You've got, um, your quarterback coming in from Novi Detroit Catholic central. And then of course you did get a transfer from, um, from um, Chicago. Um, talk about your, those two, um, those two guys coming to your program. Well, I think um, I think you're referring to Jay, who moved from Newark, New Jersey. Oh, Chicago. I apologize. Uh, but yeah, that's no worries. Um, yeah, he had just had uh, mom was getting a new job, relocating to the Midwest, had family in the area, and you know we we're fortunate enough that you know we we were his landing spot. So he's done a really good job, uh, kind of buying into our our strength training and what we told him he had to do to you know really reach his potential. So you know we're excited to see what he's about and. You know, Bo's done a really good job, a uh, quarterback from CC that uh, has come in and tried to, like, learn our stuff and, you know, be a leader. And, you know, I told him the toughest thing is, like, we got two young guys that we really, really, really like. And, you know, we, we're not going to give anything to anyone. So right now they're they're in competition with each other, and he's done a really good job of, I guess, accepting that and understanding the situation and buying in and really trying to be a leader, Uh just coming in his senior year, which is a really hard thing to do. Um, talk about, of course, you have a, a player I'm really excited to see, and that's Jamal Shakespeare. Um, I mean, he's done really well in camps. He's done really well this off season. So talk about the progress of Jamal, how he's been doing. Yeah, he was one of the young guys I was referencing there. So he's, he's played quarterback for us um, on the younger levels. He was a varsity, you know, backup last year uh, to Rick Nance. And, you know, he, he's really this off season, just shown his positional versatility too. So he'll have some packages and, you know, be in the mix to play quarterback, but he can play running back and slot receiver and free safety. And I mean, not hyperbole after we had some injuries last year, um, our best two tacklers on our team were our quarterbacks, Rick Nance and Jamal Shakespeare. And so like those guys are, he's a tough kid that works hard and just like, just wants to play football. And like, it's really what every coach wants, just wants to get out there on the field, play anywhere he can. Um, talk about obviously you got some proven players too. You got Elijah Durham, you got Cameron Flowers, you got Brody Picard. Um, talk about how those three guys have been and any other impact player that um can make some noise this year for Laker Nation. Um, I'll go one at a time, I guess. Elijah's been awesome. Like he realizes um, you know, what he has to do now that, you know, he, he was kind of more reserved, I would say, the last couple of years on varsity, letting the seniors do their thing and now he's realizing that, you know, it's his turn to kind of step up and and be that leader. And it's been a growing process for him, but I'm really proud of him because he's trying to embrace it and, you know, take that role on for him. Uh, Cameron's worked his butt off. Like he was a speed kid last year that could, you know, run and, you know, was a good receiver and we used him how we could. And he's a lot more versatile now. Like he's really worked on his game and knows he can't just run by everyone, even though he's fast. And I think he's a, a really a much more complete player uh, than last year. You know, he, he's been taking some snaps at, on defense for us, too, and really just wants to do whatever he can uh, to make himself better and to make our team better. 
Uh, Brody, we were really excited about him. I mean, I know you know him. He's been on varsity since his sophomore year. He's played quarterback. He's played fullback, running back. He's played middle linebacker. Um, he got injured and uh, actually just had labrum surgery. So he's going to be out for probably a couple months. We expect him back in the middle of the year. You know, but we're just really hoping that everything goes well in his recovery and we're able to get him back out there because you know, we're re- really expecting big things from him. Mm-hmm. Um, what about Jalen Alos? I mean, a lot of people, and uh, of course, he also have Josh, have Josh Tate as well. So talk about how they've also been doing as well. I mean, those are two guys that I'm expecting to have big years for you guys. Yeah, and that, like, honestly, it'll it'll kind of sound like I'm echoing the Elijah, what I said about him, but it's true of all of them, and they're actually all pretty close. They're pretty good friends. You hang out together outside of the football, outside of the school, um, and inside the school as well. But, you know, they, they both really stepped up. Josh is a great, great coachable kid that we really expect um, to really be, like, one of our leaders in the offensive backfield. Uh, Jaden's, again, we got a lot of guys where we're lucky to say we got positional flexibility and versatility. He's played free safety. He's played strong safety. He's played outside linebacker. He'll play some slot and tight end. And um, He's gotten stronger. He's gotten bigger. And he's really just scratching the surface of his ability. And when you look at, of course, you guys here, I mean, like when you look at West Bloomfield, um, any impact, I mean, any newcomers that can make some noise this year for you guys um, coming up this year? Um, I mean, I, there's always there's always kids that are going to be out there competing. And that's like one thing that we like, I guess, really uh, emphasize and we really strive to make sure we have is like competition every summer. So, yeah, we got some young guys that like we're on the JV. Um, that are doing a really good job. They're trying to earn spots. And some of them are like new spots that they haven't played before. And uh, I'm like, I'm pretty happy with what they've been doing so far. They've bought in. Um, they've worked hard. And I think there's a few guys that, that really could turn some heads. Yeah. Um, talk about your schedule coming up. I mean, like your schedule, I think you open up with Chippewa Valley to start the year, which is interesting. And then, of course, you have the Gauntlet Red schedule. Um, so talk about your schedule coming up. Yeah, you know, we know it's never going to be easy. The OAA Reds, it's probably the strongest league in the state. I know some other leagues will probably argue that, but I don't know. Like, they got those uh, those metrics and the fancy computer websites that agree with us, so I'm going to go with it. Um, we, we already know that's a gauntlet. Um, our crossovers, we didn't get many favors. You know, we're playing Birmingham Grove, we're playing Birmingham Seahome. Uh, we've had a ton of success, and it seems like we're going to play Southfield in a crossover every year. And uh, it's a big rivalry game. It's a big game, and I know it'll be an emotional game um, based on, you know, how last year went for us. So, you know, that's hard. And we went out there, like you said, we scheduled Chippewa Valley week one. They're a really good program and came down to the last play of the game, essentially last year against them. And we're playing Roseville week nine, who's, you know, a really talented team over from the Mac. I believe they're in the Mac white, but they're a really talented team. That's going to, you know, cause us, you know, to really game plan and give us some fits. So, I mean, it's hard when you look back at it. Like you're playing a lot of different styles of football. You're playing a lot of talented teams, a lot of well-coached teams. But at the end of the day, like we, we want to be prepared when we uh, hopefully are playing in the playoffs. And you know, if if we do everything that we're supposed to, we're going to be in a good spot. And when you look at and when you look at um that rivalry with A and T, I mean, you know, A and T went through a whole new coaching change. I mean, you know, um, Coach McKenzie's now in there. So, what was your um when you look at Southfield? it's going to be a completely different Warriors team that you're going to see than from years past. So talk about how that mindset's going to be. I know you talk, we talk one game at a time, but what was your early thoughts about what A&T went through? Uh, you know, obviously they had a tremendous year last year um, and had you know, one of the better players we've played against in the last several years at quarterback. And, he did a lot for him. He wasn't their whole team, obviously, but you know, they were really good and they're, they're going through a lot of change right now. And well, there's some f- familiar faces over there for us. Like our, our receiver coach the last seven years, uh, Brandon Smith was a, a Southfield alum and um, coach McKenzie, when he took over, came and asked him to be our, the offensive coordinator. And, you know, he kind of came to me and said, it's something he has to kind of see through. It's his alma mater and he's, obviously more than qualified um to do so so it just honestly like it's we're always so familiar with them and their 
their players and their teams. A lot of our kids grow up together and that just adds more familiarity that, you know, one, one of our guys I would say is coaching over there and uh, coach Leviticus Payne was with us the last couple of years and, and he's there now too. So, uh, you know, it'll, it'll definitely add a layer of complexity. Um, it's always going to be a big rivalry for the kids and, you know, now it's just adding to it, I guess. Look, when you look at the um, when you look at the um, the rivalry, when you look at um, obviously when you look at the division coming up, the red, you know it's not an easy division, and and like what is your um, obviously when you look at playing different styles, I mean like obviously how how does that come into the game plan when you look at when you're playing the Lakers? How does that come into the game plan for us playing the different styles? Oh well, yeah, playing against teams like around Severe, like Adams or like Lake Orion or like Clarkson, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it doesn't, you have to prepare so differently each week. And I, I guess our process is still the same, but the content's going to be different. Cause like you said, it's, it's different styles on, on both sides of the ball, you know, defensively and offensively. And, uh, it really just, I guess, us, like I said, you know, hopefully we're playing in week 10 and it gets you in the mindset of, you know, you don't know who you're going to play that week. We happen to be in a rematch last year, but it could be a brand new team that you have to get acclimated for. Um, but, you know, in reality, it's like, I feel like we're playing a brand new team, you know, each week. That's like, cause they're just so different. It's not like a, a copycat, you know, league. We all kind of have our own styles and the longer we've been together playing each other, we kind of understand each other's style. So, you know, it makes it even harder each year because I know the opposition knows us a little bit better and how we think and how we call games. So it's going to be harder and harder each year to get the job done. Before I let you go, coach, um, what is your expectations heading into the year for West Bloomfield football? You know, it's, that's a tough question, man, because our expectation is just to just go out there and compete. You know, like as we've said, you said it, I've said it, like we play in a really tough league. I know that we're pretty talented and we have some some really good players and um, we're going to set our own team goals and we'll, we'll keep those kind of internal. And my expectation is really just that we go out there and compete every single week. Last year, I felt like we went out and really competed of the nine regular season games, probably eight times. And that's still like a lasting memory for us that I thought we kind of gave a week away. And, uh, you know, we can't do that. You can't build those kind of habits. You got to be out there ready to go, you know, every single day, every single game. Because if you don't, like, you're going to lose, um, especially in this league. Um, thank you really much, Coach Jack Hilbers. Thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. Wish you the best of luck this year, and I'll see you at Media Day. Sounds good, Sam. It's always good talking to you. Take care, buddy. Mm-hmm. Okay, hey, West Bloomfield coach Jack Kilbers here on the on the phone here talking to us this week about the state of the Lakers. Um, when we come back, we're going to talk to um, farm to coach Jason Albright here on OI Now. Welcome back to OI Now here. I'm Sammy Turin here. Um, we got the coach of the Farmington Falcons, Coach Jason Albright here, class of 2006. Coach, um, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. Glad um, to be here. Um, when you look at you guys last year, it was a really – Rough year for you guys, one and eight. Um, talk about the growing pains this team went through last year. Um, and what are your um? And when you look at this season, um, what is the um? What is the goal? What's the mindset for you guys um, heading into this season? Well, uh, believe we were two and seven. Uh, I think I was <laughs> two and seven. I bet. I apologize. Yeah, My brain's not, like been going not that like it's any better. Um, but yeah, it last year was rough. We um. We moved up into uh, divisions after a successful 22 season. And, uh, you know, we we had quite a bit of returning guys at, at certain positions, but we were really young um, at, at a lot of positions, and especially our, our, our offensive line, and we had a new quarterback. And obviously those are, um, I always feel like, one of the, some of the most important, everything starts up front for us. So, um you know, and then playing two state champions doesn't help when they're in your in your division. And Groves and Rochester were really really strong teams last year. Um, you know, and that was the big mindset for us uh, this off season for me was um, getting our kids to understand like your people are not going to just sh- show up and bow down to you. And you know, we had a good year one year. We can't have fallbacks like we did last year. And uh, I think our kids. Uh, you know, really took it to heart and, and put together a pretty, pretty strong off season for us. 
Talk about some impact players for you guys. I mean, like, obviously, when you look at having a very young team like you guys did last year, um, talk about some impact players that can make some noise around OA Nation that everybody's got to know about. Uh, so, you know, we had uh, a couple kids that uh, in our junior class. Daniel Bukai uh, led our team in tackles last year. Uh, he'll be a senior this year. He played uh, inside and outside backer. He also played uh, some H back for us. Uh, Trenton Darden is a uh, senior running back who um, then obviously we had Cam Petaway at running back and then he got hurt. So um, Trenton started getting more touches there and we expect him to be a workhorse for us. And he's probably one of the, if not pound for pound, one of the strongest kids in our program. Um, uh, we have Brady Petrusha on the offensive line, who he's he's been a starter since his sophomore year on the offensive line. Um, he's returning and dabbled at times on the defensive line, but he's really that guy, that veteran on on our O line that we're looking forward to having having his uh, his guidance with some of the kids coming up from the JV as well. Um, we brought up um, quite a few, uh, what four four sophomores. And a freshman last year uh, to the varsity, um, and the running back Antoine Bailey is a kid who he's he's real smooth, run the ball, great vision, um, was on the track team this year, um, and he's he, him and, and Trenton will be guys that are uh, split in time in the backfield and playing all their spots on the offensive side. Um, Evan Sims and uh, Vaughn Hoffmeyer were sophomores that we had moved up on the varsity and are real, you know, big, you know, great size kids for the, for uh, high school, you know, or, you know, anywhere from two thirty to, to two sixty, and, you know, six foot area. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with how they've grown physically and, you know, and just catching up to the speed of the game last year, they started for us quite a bit and look forward to what they're going to bring to us this for us this year. Um, we've got Jalen Marshall, but we'll play uh corner and, and receiver for us. Um, and he's a kid who, uh, played on the J last year. Who's, you know, not, not huge by any means physically, but he's, he's got great instincts and ball skills. Um, uh, Herschel McCormick Reamer was, uh, the kid who did everything for our JV last year, um, played safety and, and, uh, played slot running back, whatever they need him to do. He's a, he's a weapon that, um, I'm looking forward to have out there on the field as well. And, um, uh, well, I mean, we like, like I could probably go on and on, but those are probably some of the guys that would uh, that pop to to the mindset first. And then we have our quarterback Julian Johnson coming back, uh, which is big. That's huge, you know. Having when yep. you return to quarterback, that's huge. Um, now we go. Let's go to your schedule. I mean, obviously, you know, I think there's one game that I know a lot of people look forward to in Farmington, and that is the um, battle of um, that's the Farmington Cup between you and um, North Farmington, um, bringing that rivalry back. Um, you know, talk about your schedule, and also more importantly, talk about that um, the battle for the Farmington Cup. Yeah, um, so we start off with Oak Park, which is it's not common, at least in my experience, I always start with a. Uh, with a league opponent, like they're in the same division. So, um, that'll be, that'll be, you know, a great battle. I, uh, I've the most respect for coach Carter. Like I, uh, when I previously coached at Farmington, I had chatted with him on scouting trips, you know, watching other teams, um, and, uh, have, have kept, you know, talk, talked with him here and there throughout the years. Cause he's Catholic league guy first being at the pores. And I had, uh, I had coached in the Catholic league for a handful of years. So, um, I know they do a great job over there with the kids and, and obviously have a lot of speed and talent that, um, you know, for getting into week one, I know our kids have to be physically and mentally prepared for that. Um, we're playing Holly week two, which, uh, coach Keenis, who was at Athens for a number of years. And that was, uh, probably my first year as head coach. He was at Athens. Um, so uh, I know he's well, his schemes are always well coached and they have like Orion defensive coordinator day toolies over there too. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I knew they had some Lake Orion guys. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, you know, and, and then we get into, you know, playing North, which, you know, I think it, it hurt our kids and hurt our community that we didn't get to have a, uh, a rivalry game last year with them. And, 
Um, you know, I think it's, it's huge for, you know, just the atmosphere for high school football. When you have a rivalry game that, you know, it's, it's, it's been big the last couple of years, uh, that we've played it and, um, our kids are looking forward to it. And that's always a game we have circled on our calendar. Um, and then, you know, obviously the rest of the league with Athens and Bloomfield Hills and Troy, um, you know, they are, I haven't played um, Athens and I think they changed offenses since the last time we played them. So looking forward to that challenge. Um, Troy, I'm looking forward to, obviously we haven't beat them since I've been the head coach at Farmington. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward. Our kids are, are, I make that well aware to our kids. Um, and then Bloomfield Hills, they go, we battled with them last year and, um, that came down to the wire. And obviously there's, I, I, I look at our schedule in the division and I th it's, uh, C Holmes on there as well. And, you know, coach the is, you know, he, his, he's got his, his team's always running, you know, smooth as can be with that option. And, um, uh, I think our, our league is very competitive, which is, you know, this is great for not just, you know, I think I, I, right now you look at it and you don't know who could, who could, who's going to win it like, uh, flat out. So, um, I think that's, that's great to have that, uh, that challenge. And it's not like, well, we already knew last year, Southfield was probably going to win it off the get go. So, um, and then we, we've got Lake Orion again. So I'm, I'm pumped that, you know, we don't have to travel out to Lake Orion <laughs> because that is, that is quite the bus bus trip, but, um, and I think I've taken the last two times we played them, but we've had to go out there. So, um, you know, coach Bell is, his, his kids are always ready to go. And, you know, I, I know, uh, it's always a challenge. They're going to be good again this year and, um, looking forward to hosting them and, you know, hopefully having a little more, uh, competitive game than what we did last year with them. Um, uh, and then we ended with Dearborn Crestwood, which, um, we picked up, you know, late, uh, because we had originally a league game there and we had moved it. So um, we picked up Dearborn Crestwood. So, you know, I'm pumped about that because they're a playoff team and that'll be great. And hopefully we're in a position that, you know, that is going to help us uh, into the playoffs or help our ranking in the playoffs. And you know that um, it's not going to be a cakewalk because I have said it every year, like we're not trying to put, put cupcakes on a schedule. Like we want to, we want to challenge our kids and our coaches and, uh, put ourselves in the best position possible to uh, do well in the playoffs. When you look at when you look at um when you look at um you guys coming in, and I think um that will be um you look at the expectation for you guys, and I look at you guys is um it's going to be interesting to see um how you guys um it's going to be interesting to see you know last season you guys struggled um you know what. It, when I look at you guys now, I think you guys can be very, very good. I mean, with the experience coming back, pro, how's program strength been going for you guys? I mean, obviously we talked about this last year. Um, well, how's program strength looking for you guys? So, I mean, my, our, our will be junior, I guess they're juniors now school is out. Um, that has been one of our, our larger classes. Our senior class has been, um, primarily a smaller one. Um, but like we have, I, I do it every winter where I send out stuff to the middle school athletes and say like, if you're planning on coming to Farmington, you know, here's a sign up so you can get information on summer workouts and all that stuff. And, you know, right now we have more numbers, um, than what, than what I anticipated. Um, now again, it's a joke with coaches and we say this all the time, like kids sign up, but they don't show up. <laughs> So, um, you know, right now, you know, with, we've been a week into the summer conditioning stuff that we do, um, and uh, being as hot as it was last year or last week, you know, we didn't have everybody out. Um, you know, we don't, we don't, I'm not seeing the, the, the numbers that I have signed up yet. So, um, but we have a lot of kids who have been, you know, uh, I think in the weight room wise, like we've probably had more kids than we've had in the past, but then. I think some of the kids in the school are starting to see that and trying to are starting to gravitate to coming out because they see the, the commitment and the, uh, the brotherhood that our kids have and they want to be part of something bigger than themselves and something special that, um, you know, I think it's, I think it's great that we're, we're getting numbers. I, I, I joke that, you know, 
hopefully we have enough helmets because obviously that's always with programs that's the uh the biggest fit or biggest issue equipment wise is having enough of that enough of those anymore but um but you know i think numbers wise um you know we should be you know I, people ask if we're going to do a freshman team or you know i think a lot of schools have done like jva jvb yep. type so we may be looking at that possibly um with with if the numbers stay true to what we are and then kind of put together maybe a handful of games for for those jvb type of kids um because we have a lot of kids too that i i probably have two two will be uh, two sophomores and a handful of juniors that haven't played before that are wanting to come out as first time football players so that's obviously they're not they're not going to be jumping in ready to go automatically as a uh, as a varsity player so before I let you go, Coach, um, what is your expectations heading into this season? I mean, like for you guys, what's your expectations this year? Uh, you know, I think you ask me this every year, and I always, you know, I, I want our kids to be, and I've said it to them already, like uh, it's wins and losses will be will be earned based on how the how the work gets put into it. Um, and my expectation, uh, with looking at the kids we have and and what they put in already, like I'm, uh, I think we're, we should hopefully have a very successful year. Um, and I, you know, when I say successful, it doesn't mean we're going to win every game. It, it means that our kids are, are doing things the right way and making good choices. Like when they're with us in, the, in practice, when they're out in the community um, and, and just doing things the right way and becoming, you know, the most successful young men that they can. Um, that's one of our staples in our program is, you know, building our kids to be, have those, have those values that will help them be successful when they're done with our program. So, you know, I, I'm looking forward to the year. Um, obviously it's, you know, it's come, getting close and, you know, our, it, it feels weird with two days being a, like a week later, essentially than what they were last year. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a, uh, it's an exciting time of year. Like kids are getting pumped and, um, you know, I'm excited to, to see what the, uh, all the work that our kids have done, um, put into action. Farmington coach, Jason Albright, um, thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. Um, wish you guys the best of luck this season and I will see you at media day. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. Thank you really much. Coach Jason Albright, coach of Farmington high school. Um, okay. When we come back here, um, we're going to talk to, um, Harper Woods coach, um, Rob Odin here on the podcast. Welcome back to Owen. Now here, I'm seeing me Tiramina here. We got the coach of the woods, Coach Rob Odin, calling us from the great state of Texas. Um, howdy, Coach Joe. How has Texas been going for you? Texas has been going well. Very hot, but going very well. You know, and you look at you look at you guys last year. I mean, you guys won the um, Division Four State Championship. Um, talk about how winning the Division Four State Championships been. I mean, like Ben. This um this past winter and then this past spring, how has it how has it changed your life as a person and as a coach? Uh, it's been amazing, you know, to re, um, bring that kind of notoriety to our community has been has been awesome. It's opened up a few doors for us with um, different companies and corporations that want to get involved and sponsor us and help pay for a few things. It's uh provided some additional opportunities getting to play the week 14 with our seniors in terms of getting evaluated for college scholarships. So overall winning the state title has been a tremendous blessing for us. Um, talk about, let's talk about this year's pioneer team. Obviously you look at, you did really well in Ann Arbor. You went, you won a seven, you won the, you won the, you won the seven on seven camp over there. Um, you, you turned a lot of proven players. Um, so talk about how the off season's been for you guys. It has been going pretty well. The guys have been working hard in um, small groups mainly. And now that we're on the field, they've been uh, doing a lot of work collectively. Uh, you know, our, our passing game is starting to come together. Our defense is starting to gel. We are replacing a lot of really good players that we lost through the graduation. But our young guys are, are very hungry. They're excited. They're ready for their opportunity, and they are, they're looking great right now. Talk about, of course, there's been one play I've been really excited about, and we talked about him last year, and that was Nate. Um, 
obviously, you know, we saw I saw glances of him last year, even the state championship game. Um, how has Nate been trans, trans transitioning to being now the full time starter for you guys this year? He's been doing amazing. He's been studying his tail off. He's been um, building some consistency and camaraderie with the younger wide receivers. His, his wide receiver core has changed a lot. Um, a lot of new faces out there, but some really explosive guys. He's been coming more of a vocal leader for us, so he's kind of taking the team under his wing, and the guys are following him because he's doing things the right way. But his leadership ability has definitely been shown this offseason through the weight room and through the first part of uh, team activities this summer. So Nate is doing a tremendous job of training and getting better every day. Talk about your nephew, Dakota. Um, obviously, I've seen his videos. He's made some leaps and bounds this offseason. Um, talk about talk about how Dakota's been going for you guys. Dakota's elite, man. He's, he's arguably going to be one of the top players nationally in his class. This offseason, he's uh, put on a few pounds and, and gained a little bit more speed because this fall he'll probably be a presence on both sides of the ball. He'll play some defensive back as well as wide receiver. And he's not going to sneak up on anybody. You know, we knew what kind of ability he had, but I think the state of Michigan kind of knows now. Um, another guy that's been a leader for us this offseason and um, doing things the right way. Coach, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, what other impact players have you mentioned? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, other impact players will be, you know, our nucleus is always our offensive and defensive lines. So you got Brian Weatherspoon up there. He's a uh, 2025 defensive lineman. He'll be committing to a max school soon. He's, he's a heck of a leader. We got Javon Jones, our defensive tackle, three-year starter for us. He's doing amazing things. He'll probably be a committing as soon as well. And then we have Jay Sean Kennedy, our left tackle, that's back for his third season, and he's doing things really, really well as well. All three of those guys will be playing college football and graduating in December and doing a great job for us as seniors this year. Um, when you look at you guys, obviously the running game, um, you know, you look at Kobe Bailey as um, – I mean, talk about how Kobe's been doing um, this offseason. I mean, like, obviously, you know, he's been one of the big guys, especially, you know, when you don't have to rely a lot on the pass. You know, you can just give the ball to Kobe. So talk about how he's been doing. Kobe's explosive, man. He's been doing well. He's put on a few pounds this offseason because he understands the rigors of being tailback one in our system. He's uh, developing as a pass catcher as well. So he's expanding his game beyond just being – the dominant ball carrier, he'll be a major factor in um, every down this year. He'll go and be a three or four down back. He's, uh, like I said, worked on his explosiveness, his speed, and then a little bit with his size in the weight room. So, Kobe, we're expecting a huge senior year from him and to continue to lead our team, especially rushing the football. Talk about, obviously, of course, some newcomers. I mean, like, any um, impactful newcomers on the um, in the team that um, has really caught your eye? Yeah, a couple of young wide receivers. We got DeAndre Biden. He's a uh, freshman. Um, had a great, you know, June. Received an offer from Michigan, Michigan State, and Alabama this June. He went down to Alabama, ran in the 4-4s, four you know, so he'll be a blow to top off the coverage wide receiver similar to what Dakota's roar was last year. So they'll complement each other very well. Another wide receiver, more of an H-back tight end type, is A.J. Henley. Another ninth grader coming in, 6'3", about 190 pounds. He'll do a lot for us in the uh, run and pass game. But I'm excited to see those two young guys get after it. Um, when you look at when you look at um, your okay, schedule okay, coming schedule. up, and I think – you look at your schedule and it's it's tough. I mean, like you know, you're back in the white this year. Um, talk about you know the schedule this upcoming season. And I know last year the schedule really prepared you to run to, in your Division Four state championship run. Um, so talk about the schedule from last year and then talk about this year's schedule a little bit, Coach. Uh, last year was murderous row. You know, I think we played, in my opinion, the toughest schedule in the state. 
We play some really, really, really good football teams that are always well prepared and well coached, and they have some great athletes. This year's schedule is nothing less than that. Um, we play a couple of new programs for the first time for us. You know, we've never played Oxford before. So we'll get an opportunity to play versus Oxford. That'll be a really interesting game on the blue turf, you know what I mean? That'll be really interesting, you guys going up there to Harp to um, Oxford to play the Wildcats. Yeah, that's going to be a, a fun game for us. You know, I've watched them from afar, very physical, very well-coached team. So we're looking forward to those challenges. And um, in our non-league games, you know, we go over to Catholic Central Week 3. That's going to always be a test against them guys you know they're a great program traditionally and we're looking forward to those challenges but as in years previous especially last year we're kind of banking on the regular season schedule to help us prepare for the gauntlet that is division four and we're hoping to be able to come out of that thing you know healthy and and make a strong long playoff run again when you look at division four and I know last year you've seen some really good teams. I mean, in that, in Division Four. I mean, like any teams that, you know, that has really got your eye. I mean, like any teams in that division that, you know, you're keeping a really close eye on come postseason time that you guys could see down the road. Yep, there's a couple. We we always got our eyes on um, Dearborn Design Child. We felt that last year. They were right right on the edge of making that next step, and they returned a very talented team, so we got our eyes on those guys. We're always looking from afar at Goodrich. Goodrich will be back in the Final Four, if not the state championship. They returned 95% of the team that they had last year, so we know that they'll be back where they traditionally are. And then, um, you know, Grand Rapids, South Christian. You know, that program is phenomenal, and, um, you know, we had to beat them to win it last year, but make no mistake about it. We're expecting to see them make a long playoff run again. So those are just a couple of the teams that we got our eyes on from afar. I know I know, we talked about this last year, and I know we talked about this, and I, I just – I was thinking about this a couple of days ago, was how you were the final play of, the, of that Division Four State Championship game um, I think it was your son. I think it was your son Jacob um, that deflected the pass. Um, I mean, I gotta remember it. But um, but um, what was your thought process thing in that final play when South Christian had a chance, you know, to to win the game? What was your thought process? I know you had to be nervous. Yeah, we it, it was some nerves involved, but um, good nerves. You know, we called timeout before the play after they kind of showed us their formation. The timeout wasn't really to make any adjustments. It was just to get the guys to just take it all in. I say, guys, we're going to cry in about 30 seconds, either because we won this thing or we lost this thing. But uh, let's go out there. And, you know, there's no place in the world you'd rather be in that moment than right there. The guy that made the play was Keontae Wilson, one of our senior corners. I he got a hand on the coach. ball. But, our no, that's fine. Our goal was to – contain the quarterback our our biggest fear was that all would be covered and he would take off and run it into the end zone so we had to cup the football we call it which means keep him in the pocket and pull him up make him throw it before he's ready and we was able to get a little pressure on him and he had to throw it a little bit before he could set his feet so that was kind of our plan on that play that was one of the that was one of my most like when I watch that game I'm saying to myself I'm hoping I'm hoping I'm hoping you guys win that you guys won that one and you guys did and look at where you're at now I mean like you know holding the holding the crown in division four um when you look at when you look at the league you're in the white um you know obviously you know Aaron Marshall's no longer at him a and t um now he's at him Birmingham brother rice um what is your thought process about the division um, that you're in? Um, talk about talk about the teams in your division a little bit heading into the season. Oh, the white is always tough. Um, we lost, you know, Coach Marshall and those Southfield guys uh, moved over to Brother Rice. Strong program there. Um, but 
to us, the team to beat in the division right now is Birmingham Groves. They're a team that we've had to play a couple years. We haven't had much success. We've lost both of those contests. So to us, they're the leader in the division. Stony Creek, we had an opportunity to play them in a non-conference game last year, and now it's a conference game. I know their coach moved on as well, but they hired a great staff, you know, with the defensive coordinator they brought in from Lake Orion. So we're expecting them to be really, really, really well coached. And the rest of the league is tough as well. You know, you can't take a day off or a night off or any given Friday. Those things can go either way. You know, the division is strong top to bottom, I believe. And we're going to have to play our best football to come up out of that thing with some victories. Um, I got to ask you this question. How did Novi Detroit Catholic Central come into your schedule? I mean, like, I'm going like, when I looked at the schedule and it said CC on there, I said, you got to be kidding me. You know, you're playing CC. I'm going like, uh oh, you know what I mean? So what's your thought process of playing Novi Detroit Catholic Central in week three? You know, having to go down there, that's not going to be an easy game for you guys. Well, you know, when I set the schedules up, I'm never looking for the easier contests, you know. There's a lot to be learned on either way it go. And I tell our guys, you know, let's go play our tails off. And if losing this game is the worst thing that happens to us, we're winning in life because that's great competition out there. CC is a bit of a, a brother school to us. You know, we do a lot of work together in the off season with those guys and those coaches. They had an open week and we had an open week because we would have had to fill the Stony Creek game and when it became a league game, when they moved to the white, we wasn't going to play Stony in week one and week three. Mm-hmm. So we kept the divisional game, and which created an opening in week three, and uh, it gave us an opportunity to play up. As much as we get a chance to play Division One and Division Two teams, we're always going to take it. If you look at the history of our crossovers, we very rarely play schools our size because we want the opportunity to get better and to level up and play some of the bigger schools because we believe it helps prepare us for playoff runs. And when you look at, and when you look at you guys, I mean, like, obviously, you know, what's most interesting, what I've always noticed was you guys have like different helmet combinations, you know, with your uniforms and all that. I thought it was very interesting. You know what I mean? To see you guys have three different helmet combinations. You got a black set, a maroon set and a white set. So talk about, Talk about who decides, you know, what uniforms you're wearing, you know what I mean, for game days. Every week, those decisions are made by our senior leadership. So um, our captains come together. Normally, they do it preseason, and they just come up with the combinations for the whole year. But sometimes they, they alter the swag during the week. But that's, that's, that's player choice. You know, our captains decide, and I'm pretty sure they take – some of the considerations from some of the other players that are not captains and say, this is what we're wearing this week. We try to put a theme on every game just to build some camaraderie, build some excitement. But um, ultimately our goal is to uh, not wear the same combination more than once in the season. But when you play 14 weeks, you kind of run out of options. So it's been really, really good. We've been really, really fortunate in that regard. And, we were able to secure a uh, donation for helmets in a grant that we wrote to the Detroit Lions a few years ago. Mm -hmm. When they donated 150 helmets to us, I didn't want to paint them all one color. So I said, well, we'll have 50 white, 50 maroon, and 50 black. And we've been kind of keeping that thing going. So it kind of matches up with the uniform combinations we wear and things like that. But our seniors decide what we're wearing every week from head to toe. And when you look at the, um, when you look at, obviously, a little bit off topic here, um, I want to know what your thought process was of the Detroit Lions. I mean, like, obviously, the season they had in 2023, um, you know, what was your thought process, you know, seeing the Lions, you know, winning the NFC North for the first time since, um, since 19, um, actually, not the first time winning the NFC um, North ever, you know, the last division title was 1992. So what was your thought process when the Lions um, won the division and got the NFC Championship game? What was your thought process? Um, extremely proud, you know, as a hometown guy to see them have success. And and to me, they have a similar mentality. They're a blue-collar team, man. They roll up their sleeves 
they punch a clock and they go to work every day. And I love that about them. I think it represents, you know, our city well. I thought that their success on the field kind of brought the city of Detroit and the state of Michigan together and created a huge following. And I think nothing but positive things can come from when our local sports teams are playing at a high level and doing very well. And I was very proud of the success that they had on the field and became an even bigger fan than I was previously. And when you look at, when you look at you guys, I mean, like you guys, you guys view, I view you guys as that, you know, blue collar, you know, hardworking, you know, very, you know, very gritty team. I, that's how I've always looked at Harper Woods football as, as that type of mentality. You know what I mean? Hard work, gritty, you know, never say die attitude when you look at you guys. So when I look at you guys heading into this year, what are, what, what are you guys looking at? What's your expectations this year heading into the season? Our expectations is to go one and know every week. We want to take, you know, we got a very, very short vision right now. We're not looking past any opponent. So we deal with the opponent at hand. Our goal is to go one and know every week and stack the days, man, and continue to work. We know that if we do, you know, just play our style of football at the highest level we can, we'll have some success. And then we just want to make the tournament, get in it, and make a strong playoff run. So our goals are always the same. They don't change from year to year. It's to win the division. It's to host three weeks at home in the state playoffs. And it's to have a shot at the semifinals and ultimately win the state championship. Mm -hmm. I want to know, like, you know, obviously you had two games you played on Saturday. Um, I know we talked about this a couple months ago. I mean, who's that? I mean, like, was I mean, whose idea was it to play those games on Saturday? You know, during the um, I think it was the district final and then the regional finals. Um, what was your thought process of playing on a Saturday afternoon? You know, instead of like playing a Friday night. Well, a couple things. Uh, one, it was my idea. We kind of looked from weeks out, and we know that one our state championship game for our division is usually on a Saturday, and then we also know that. Our semifinal game, you know, is always going to be on a Saturday. So in the weeks previous to that, we try to align that and keep a seven-day work week. So we went to the Saturday format for a couple reasons this year, for those two reasons, but also we were a little banged up, and the extra day of prep allowed us to get some of those injured guys back on the field. You know, another day, day and a half of prep allowed us to do some things differently throughout our practice week. So it kind of benefited us being the home team and being able to determine some of that because we can add an extra day or if we look and we see that an opponent played Friday night, you know, it kind of throws them off a little bit as well. So it's a little bit of strategy in it. But ultimately, last year, it was set up that way to get some of the banged up injured guys back on the field. And that's a good thing. I mean, like, obviously, before I let you go, Coach, um, how is Texas down there? How is how is Houston? You know, how is it? How is it down there? Houston is really, really, really nice place to visit. Um, I've been here a few times. I'm here now hosting one of my former players, Desmond King. Mm-hmm. He's a defensive back with the Houston Texans. He had his summer camp that he throws every summer down here, and I, um, I run it for him. So, me and my wife flew down here a few days ago to run his camp, and we're heading back home today so we can get back, you know, and get. Harper Woods ready to rock and roll as well. But Houston is uh, 10 degrees warmer than at home, and it's unbearably hot to me down here. You know, I couldn't do this year-round. I mean, I know Michigan last week we had we had this heat wave down up here. I mean, like, you know, the, the heat and the humidity. Um, it's, not, it's not easy to bear, you know that. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, so. Um, Coach Odin, um, thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. Um, Wish Harper Woods the best of luck this season, and I will see you at Media Day. Thanks for having us, Sammy. We appreciate you. God bless you, man. Hey, Coach Rob Olden here on the podcast here. Um, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Um, make sure you take care. God bless, and I will see you all next week. Everybody, take care. God bless, and see you all then.